Look, with the Surface Laptop Go, Microsoft is doing what Steve Jobs used to do. And I'm going to start with a really bold study here today. People who have had damage to the emotional part of their brain were asked to decide between green and yellow jello and guess what they simply couldn't make that decision and collectively we as human being any purchase we make is basically based on our emotional state of mind and that is exactly where microsoft is going with this device here so before you move on check out this comment from a surface laptop go user on youtube i tried the base model surface laptop go it failed even my low expectations for a secondary typing stuff on the run device and this is a really tough comment during this video you will see why this happened when you look at this device from a short distance it really looks awesome and that doesn't change when you get closer right quite the opposite what changes though is that you start to notice a couple of things more and more it starts already with the plastic on the bottom right not a deal breaker it still has that overall premium finish and you start typing on a keyboard and wow it is good it has that 1.3 millimeter key travel and it feels really great and then you see suddenly it is not backlit okay well you parked it but it has an awesome fingerprint scanner right? i like this better anyway than the windows hello and then you wonder why the trackpad is so small but yet so incredibly good it really is well you rest you rest on the machine and you will notice that you rest accidentally makes the trackpad click so now it makes sense that everything is smaller because otherwise you wouldn't be able to properly type on this compact device right guys do you see what's happening here already with the surface laptop go your rational side of the brain is kicking in but that doesn't mean it is a mediocre device well and you move on to the display and then people really like that three by two aspect ratio here and i have to say when i look at the bezels right they're really thin and it looks modern and sleek to me and the workable display real estate is actually really usable and for some people that is more important than focusing on the lowest resolution of any surface device ever yeah and that is a fact and it is really good for productivity and that's what people say and i've seen some people are saying i'm dealing with alphanumeric characters and that is a really awesome screen estate here to deal with on that note let's have a look at the real life usage and this is the picture and audio quality of the surface laptop go and you can see it's actually not bad what i can see here i have to look at the results but i'm also gonna test the green screen in a second but what i'm gonna do first is i'm gonna have these headphones here these old apple headphones I'm going to give you a taste of what it sounds like with them. So this is how I usually would do a call, a Zoom call, also to have better audio quality. So I have this plugged in the Surface Laptop Go here. Picture quality obviously didn't change. Let's see what the audio quality is now. I mean, webcam is okay, right? I mean, the M1 MacBook Air webcam isn't really that much better. I'm talking about the webcam only, not the performance, but it's pretty much on par here. You are now looking at the MacBook Air M1, M1, the brand new chip webcam. Is it any better? It has supposedly this super duper image processing signaling in there. You'll be the judge of that. Let me know in the comments below. And we tried Zoom and interestingly enough, I wasn't able to use the proper green screen which I have set up for all my calls, for my daily calls. It will only work with the virtual green screen plugin, but it does work. So you could see I have a green screen here. This is for my daily calls I do every day and it works really well. I have a MacBook set up or even the Galaxy Book Flex that also works well, but here for some reason it doesn't, but you have this virtual green screen plugin and you can see that it works well. I'm using my hands on purpose a bit so you can see how it works. There you go. This is Zoom with a virtual green screen icon and when we move on to teams microsoft teams everything works fine i would expect that especially when it comes to the green screen there was no issues here also the virtual green screen pack was working fine and then there's the speakers i mean this is a really small and compact device but listen to this and considering we put it against a two thousand dollar device hey not bad hey the unit we are testing is the i528 gigabyte ssd 8 gigabyte of ram it costs 700 bucks and despite the fact it is called a surface device it does not have pen support it does have a touch screen but no pen support Battery life is okay. We came to seven hours in a normal working day. And when we had Netflix, we have 50% brightness. It was about 11 hours and 10 minutes movie in a loop. So 
there's that. My son actually uses a Surface Laptop Go for homeschooling and it all worked fine. Everything he's doing with it kind of really works well. There's one thing that basically um, comes along and that is when it gets too hot, the fan kicks in. So these are kind of a small annoying niggles that come along with this device because when you are on a team call, you can hear the fan kicking in. But here's the but. Would he trade this in for an Acer Aspire, for example, with backlit keyboard or a better display? The answer is simply no. And this is where I see the device. It is kind of stuck between your emotional state of mind and your rational state of mind. And only you can make that decision if it's good enough for your personal business case, considering the price, of course. However, what I can tell you is that despite all the flaws I mentioned, the Surface Laptop Go is here to stay in our household. Thank you for watching. Jens here from Alsace Face. Peace out.